Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? It's me, Mr. 4K Upscaler. Um, sorry about the lighting and uh, this atmosphere and the room. Uh, I wanted to do this in the balcony outside, but the problem is there's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of noise, sirens, and whatnot. So I didn't want any outside distraction from the, the balcony being in, in, on the outside. So I decided to film this here inside. Okay. Um, this will be a vlog number 46. It's going to be 19 minutes. It's not going to be a super extra long. 19 minutes. I'm going to go for 19 minutes. I'm going to try to cover some things here, some subjects and some stuff here that I need to talk about uh, really quickly. First off, let's start with the OLED. You know, a lot of people have been on my case about the OLED. You know, hey, dude, you had OLED. You were the first ad adopter of the OLED. You had uh, B6, C6. C7, dude, what happened to your OLEDs? Well, first thing you need to understand that I loved my OLEDs. I made a bunch of videos about my OLEDs. I never said anything bad about the picture quality of the OLEDs. I didn't care that it wasn't bright enough. I love the fact that you had beautiful viewing angles, deep dark levels. Uh, every and each pixel was emitting by itself, meaning red, green, blue, yellow. All of the colors were emitting by itself, and it was beautiful. The problem was the fact that there was a lot of issues with the OLED. You know, I personally didn't have a burn-in. I personally didn't have a retention of the screen, but that's because I didn't have those TVs for such a long period of time. Okay, I'm sure if I kept it, I would have had it by now. Okay, just like I have it on my phone, there's a little burn-in, a little button where you click record on my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Same thing would have happened on my television. It would have happened by now. Okay, that's because the nature of technology, okay? I didn't return those OLEDs because I needed the money. I returned it because I simply didn't want to take that chance, knowing I spent $3,200 on the TV, and there's a good risk of having that burn-in. There's a good risk of me having that issue uh, on the TV, on the panel. I just couldn't take that risk, Okay? And that's why I got rid of it, guys. It's not because I didn't like the picture quality. I love the picture quality, but I cannot take that risk. You know, I don't know why is this so hard for some people to understand, you know, especially for some people out there in the United Kingdom where just been, they've been coming after me. They've dedicated their, their videos, their YouTube channels coming after me because uh, they think that I hate OLED. Well, why would someone who hates OLED make a 43-minute video talking about how beautiful the picture quality on the OLED is. Why would someone do that? But I cannot keep that TV due to the fact that it's a very, very fragile technology and I don't want to spend $3,000 onto something that's going to have an issue down the road. I don't want to buy a TV where I know two years from now, three years from now, I'm going to have some problem. Same thing happened with my plasmas. When I had my Panasonic plasma, it, there was issues. There was problems. There were spots on the TV, yellow, orange, red, okay? These are fragile technologies. Organic light emitting uh, diodes or diodes, whatever you want to call them. Yes, they look beautiful, but they're very fragile, okay? They're very sensitive to the sunlight. They're very sensitive to, to moisture. They're very sensitive to, to how you move the TV. If you touch TV, if you hit it by accident, it's a very fragile technology. That it's something that nobody in their right mind is going to be investing into. Because people have families, they have kids, they're busy. They don't have time to be babysitting technology, okay? They're not going to spend money babysitting technology. They're busy. They have they're busy lives. And they don't have time to be babysitting their technology. Especially for the TV. And this is why Samsung is leading. This is why Samsung is such a highest selling television right now don't take my word for it look it up you will see the samsung in america north america which is a big market for uh, korea for south korea samsung it's just killing it right now on the sales with the qled the second best selling tv it's of course tcl right now tcl is right right below the samsung and i'm very proud of tcl and what tcl has achieved here uh, in terms of micro leds Micro LED is this new technology that's still, you know, there's jury still out on that one. 
We'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully, micro LEDs will be a successful technology where we can finally phase out with the LCD and get rid of the LCD and the backlit. Hopefully, micro LEDs that te that technology, but we don't know yet. I don't have a crystal ball. I cannot tell you the future. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to have to wait and see. Okay. So we'll see what happens with that with the CES Vegas uh, 2019. <clears throat> we'll see what happens with that. All right, so that's the OLED. All right, so hopefully this clarifies to you, my subscribers, why I'm hesitant to buy another OLED. I could have bought another OLED last week, two weeks ago, for 1500 Easily, I could have bought one. But I don't want to buy something that I know I'm going to have problems. Something I'm going to have to babysit. Guys, I don't want to babysit the technology. And I sure as hell don't want to spend money onto something where I have to get a warranty and pay arm and leg for the warranty as well. These warranties are very expensive when it comes to the LG. And the LG uh, customer service, it's pain in the ass. Okay, contacting them in South Korea, then here in America, then they have to ship it back, get another one. It's a pain in the ass. Ask my friend Wayne Strudwick, he will tell you what a pain in the ass that was for him to get another OLED, okay? How long he had to wait. So, I don't want to do that, okay? And if you can't understand that, well, then you're just a fanboy. You're just an OLED fanboy, and uh, there is no cure for you. I'm sorry, okay? Cannot help you, man. You need to help yourself. And please, guys, don't educate me on OLED, all right? I had OLED when it was hot, when Ridley Scott and Francis Ford Coppola were advertising, and I had OLED. So I know everything there is to know about the OLED, guys, okay? I have videos on the OLED. I don't need you to educate me on the OLED. You need to educate yourself on the OLED. Don't educate me on the OLED, okay? Now, let's move on to another subject because I only have, like like I said, 19 minutes total to do this vlog. I want to keep it very constructive and short. Let's talk about uh, these individuals on the Xbox who actually can't read and understand how Xbox One X Enhanced works. And these are the same individuals that go to Digital Foundry, which I love. They go to Digital Foundry Richard, and even though Digital Foundry Richard uses a nice and slow, plain English, original English, that everybody can understand, uh, these individuals, these fanboys, I'm sorry, I have to call them fanboys, they can't seem to register to what Richard is saying. Okay? And what was Richard saying? Both Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro, they're using different methods to achieve 4K resolution. Let me repeat that one more time. Both Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro are using different methods to achieve 4K resolution. They use dynamic resolution, and in some cases they use checkerboard uh, resolution, 4K resolution. These are different sources, outsource, different sources of resolution they're using to achieve that 4K. But it doesn't mean that it's a native 4K. Okay, so when you go to the Xbox One X store page to uh, pre-order something, or in this case, pre-order Red Dead Redemption 2, and you scroll down and you see it says HDR10, 4K Ultra HD, and Xbox One X Enhanced, as soon as you see that 4K Ultra HD, you're thinking, oh, this is running in a native 4K, hallelujah, oh my goodness, whoa, Eureka, oh my God. No, no, it doesn't mean it's native 4K. On all of the games, there are Xbox One X, uh, Enhanced, it says 4K Ultra HD, but it doesn't mean it's a native 4K, exception to one game, which is Far Cry 5. But even with Far Cry 5, they had to do tests to double check to make sure that it's really running in native 4K. Same thing with the Destiny 2, they had to double check to make sure that it's running in native 4K. This is why we have Digital Foundry. Uh, Digital Foundry has the, uh, has the equipment, has the software, has all of these uh, accolades to be able to test to see what the source resolution is what the source resolution is that's being used to achieve that 4K. Like I said, there's different methods. There's checkerboarding, there's dynamic resolution. Dynamic resolution varies. It goes from 1800 to 1700 to 1600 
to 1900, to 1700, to 1600. It varies many different levels. All right. So why is this so hard for some people to understand? And I got a lot of heat, a lot of dislikes because people couldn't understand what I was talking about. Just like some people couldn't understand, well, what do you mean when you say that it doesn't matter if the graphics look so good, but you're running in 720p? I mean, if you can't understand that, then, man, you need to educate yourself. I mean, really, you need to educate yourself. Let me, re let me explain this very slowly. All right, let me explain this very slowly. It doesn't matter if you have photorealistic graphics on your computer or on your console. I don't care if it's photorealistic. If you are running at a very low resolution, let's say 720p or 480p, you will not see that photorealistic graphical detail because it's the pixel by pixel that enhances the detail. Okay, so if you want to appreciate the graphics, you're going to need a higher pixel count, higher pixel ratio to achieve that detail. And if you can't understand this basis, this basic thing, then, man, you shouldn't be. Then you need to educate yourself. I mean, I really don't understand why so hard. There's You have Internet. You have access to Internet. And access to Internet will give you all of these resources for you to be able to learn to learn about how everything works it's just a matter of you learning it but some people they don't want to learn they don't want to learn anything they just want to sit on their butts and they just want to talk out of their ass quite frankly without doing any kind of constructive research to understand how things work Okay, I'm 40 years old, man. I, I, I learned about this way before you guys even existed in your daddy's nut sacks, okay? All right? I know about this stuff. I went to the video production school. All right? This is not my first rodeo, man. All right? I've been around. So you don't need to educate me. You need to educate yourself. All right? I know what I know, okay? I don't need to prove myself to anybody. I know what I've done in the past. I know my experience. I know what I know. Okay? But you need to... Get yourself educated because what's going to happen is you're going to look stupid when you're sitting around professionals. And you're going to say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. What is this guy talking about? Who is this guy? Okay. And that's what's going to happen to you because you choose not to learn. Okay. And then some people come up to me, <clears throat> but why are you calling some individual stupid? Because I cannot be nice, guys. I cannot be nice about this. And the reason I call them stupid because I want them to start educating themselves about this matter. Or otherwise, don't waste my time. You know, you come to my channel and then you put something stupid and say, oh, it's set in stone. It's native 4K, it's set in stone. No, nothing is set in stone. No one has seen or played the Xbox One X version of Red Dead Redemption 2. No one even knows how Red Dead Redemption 2 runs on the Xbox One X. They only tested the PlayStation 4 Pro version, all right? I mean, they haven't tested it. They have seen the trailer of the PlayStation 4 Pro version. Rockstar has kept this game so secretive, and they locked it secretly. They didn't want anything to leak because it's such a big anticipated game that's coming out this Friday, October 22nd. Ah, uh, 26th. October 26th. I said 22nd. Anyway, it happens. Uh, I wish it was 22nd. But 26th better because it's Friday. So please, guys, you know, if, if look, I don't care if you hit the dislike. I don't care if you like me, don't like me. Look, at the end of the day, the facts are facts, whether you like it or don't. You can hit 3 million dislikes, but the facts are facts, okay? I don't care. I mean, I still made 1.5K views on that video, regardless of some idiots coming in and hitting dislikes. I don't care, you know. And if you don't like me, listen, if you don't like me, you can actually filter me out so I never show up on your recommendation on the YouTube. You have that ability. So if you never want to see me, this ugly mug, or hear me talk, you can actually filter me out. I have filtered certain YouTube channels. 
Why? Because I don't, I don't want to be bothered with them. I don't like them. I don't want to see them. I don't want to waste my time with them, okay? Because these individuals will never change. And I sure as hell am going to waste my time trying to convince them as to why they're wrong. So I filter these individuals from my YouTube circle. You have that option. You can do the same with me. But don't, don't bother coming here trying to tell me this and that. Because you know I'm not going to reply to you. You're going to go directly to my BRR block remove report. Uh, as a matter of fact, you're wasting your time typing on the keyboard because you're always going to be ending up in my spam folder. You know what I do with my spam folder? Let me take a sip of coffee. Here, I'll tell you. You know what I do with my spam folder? I click delete all of the above. Check mark everything and delete. So don't waste your time. If you want to waste your time, waste your time, brother. I don't care. Just remember, you're confusing me with somebody who gives a shit. This guy doesn't give a shit, which that should be clear. For how many years I've been doing this, if it doesn't ring a bell to you that I don't give a shit, then you really, there's no help for you. And I feel sorry for you because you're one sad, pathetic fucker, okay? And I'm sorry for the language, but I cannot be nice about this, all right? Grow up. Stop being a child. Grow up and be a man for once in your life. Grow the pears. Be a man. Take responsibility for once in your life. Own it. Be a man. Own it. Okay? But don't cry to me. All right? Now, we got maybe four more minutes left. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about is Q8FN versus Q9FN. I'm going to try to explain this very shortly. Yesterday, I was in Magnolia with my friend uh, Alex. We put 65-inch Q8FN next to... Uh, 65-inch Q8FN next to 65-inch Q9FN. And we played a Infinity War Avengers side by side. And we could not tell a difference between the two. We turned the lights off. We watched it from every and each angle. We turned the lights back on. We left exact the same picture quality. You know, I could not tell a difference. He could not tell a difference. They were very identical. Now, on the paper... And on the equipment that you measure it with the Kalman, uh, calibrating equipment, it's going to say, obviously, that uh, Q9FN has uh, 300 plus, close to 400 uh, local dimming zones. And it's 400 extra nits of peak of brightness versus the uh, Q8FN. But when you're looking at it next to each other, side by side, there you can't tell a difference. I really couldn't tell a difference. He couldn't tell a difference. Hell, even his manager that came in um, that's uh, running the Magnolia says, man, I can't tell a difference either. So take it for what it is, guys. If you want to go and buy Q9FN, buy Q9FN. But I'm telling you, I haven't seen any drastic difference between the two. Okay? I will talk more about this on some other videos. I don't have time to talk about this on, on the vlog and what I was doing there in Magnolia, but I will have maybe a separate video for about, about that, you know. All right, so what else I can say? Well, that's about it, guys, because I'm running out of minutes. Uh, you know, I don't have enough memory here to do this. Uh, hopefully, this clarifies the OLED whole, the whole OLED issue and people coming after me because of the OLED. And hopefully, this other issue is being clarified, people coming after me. Uh, if I'm being rude, now if I'm being rude for no reason, I apologize to you. But when someone's being an idiot and stupid, I have to call it the way it is, guys. Okay, I cannot be nice about that. All right, this, this, this doesn't mean I'm trying to be a dick. It's just I have zero tolerance for stupidity, guys. Either you want to learn something or you don't want to learn. All right, well, there you have it. Uh, I did promise 19 minutes, so this is going to be the end of the video. Sorry about the lighting. Like I said, I wanted to do this in the balcony. But I didn't want to do it because of the noise outside of traffic and sirens and whatnot. Uh, thank you for watching this vlog. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. This is the vlog number 46. Thank you for watching. Take care. Have a nice uh, Saturday.